Do you understand what I'm saying? He's not contradicting himself. He's trying to make you to understand that, look, I am fully human being. You can see me, you can feel me, you can touch me. But I'm telling you, as a human being, I'm going to my father. But if you come to the divine way, you don't really know, you don't really need to go on. I mean, you don't really need to see the father because you have seen me, you have seen the father. I mean, it's a mystery. And that's why Christianity is so important, very great. It's a mystery. We follow Christ by faith. When you have faith in Jesus Christ, I'm telling you, your journey toward the kingdom of God is real. Even though many people may not believe that he is God. Many people may not believe that he is the savior of the world. Many people not, you may just take him as just an ordinary prophet who came some time ago and he died and he's God. Even though you take him that way, but he made this emphatic statement. If that I have not read, I have not heard, maybe I am shallow in my study. I have not heard of any other, um, what they call it, prophets of old or whatsoever that have declared emphatically what Jesus Christ said about his relation with God, that if you have seen me, you have seen the Father, that without me, you cannot have access unto the Father. I don't know if, I, maybe I'm shadowing my study, but I've not heard and I've not read. And so if a man like this talks, and the man is still alive, and he's saying that, that in verse 12, now he has said, the works that I do, I say unto you that believe in me, the work that I do, Shall you do also, and greater works than this? So, because Christ arose, we can now do greater works than what He did. That's what He's saying. Greater works than what He did. And now, if you look at the Bible very well, in the book of Luke, chapter ten, verse nineteen, even before He went to the cross, He already told the disciples, "He said, Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon scorpion and serpent." And over every plant of the enemy, and not even by enemies, they will hurt you. And if you look at it very well, it made them to understand that you need to wait for this power. This power is coming in verse, uh, uh, Luke, Luke chapter 24, verse 49. Acts chapter 1, to read verse 8, he's trying to tell them, he said, And ye will receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and you will be my witnesses. You will declare my counsel before man. So he has already declared to us that we are going to do greater works than the work he has done. But we need to be empowered from on high. Praise God. Amen. Verse 13 to 14, let me read. I will say what ye shall ask in my name. That will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Can you imagine? Say so you should ask God in his name that is going to do it. I don't know if you understand what is going on here. This man was not just speaking as a mere human being. He was speaking as God himself. As the father. And some other time he speaks like a man. Jesus is fully God, is fully man. Let me not bore you with all those ones. But one thing is this. Because Christ arose, because Christ arose, we now have confidence to act in his name. We have confidence to ask where? What? In his name. In Mark chapter 18, verse 18, 18 to 20, was trying to make the disciples to understand that you and I, that whatsoever you burn on earth will be burned in heaven. Whatsoever you lose on earth will be lost in heaven. If two of you shall agree concerning anything in my name, if you are if two of you shall agree concerning anything, it shall be done unto you. That's what he said. That's what he said. And if you look at the book of Mark chapter 6, don't forget he said, he said, where we read, he said, Whatsoever ye shall ask in my name. I will do it. So, if he said that and he died, he didn't rise again. Uh, then it has no effect. But you know, that since he made that word, that statement, and even up till now, when you mention the name of Jesus, in any situation, especially in spiritual situations, when you mention that name of Jesus, the devil cannot withstand that name. Demons of darkness cannot withstand that name. Because the Bible says in Philippians chapter, uh, chapter 2, if you read down there from verse uh, 9 to 11, you will see that the Bible says, God has highly exalted that name Jesus and given him 
name that is above every name, that at that name of Jesus, every knee should bow. And every tongue confess that he is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And so that name, because he rose from the dead again, if he did not rise from the dead, then the name would be powerless. The name will be fruitless. But I'm telling you, even as I'm mentioning that name, Jesus, anyone that has any sickness in the name of Jesus, the person is healed. Even as I'm calling that name, Jesus, anyone that is possessed by the power of darkness, in the name of Jesus, is set loose Amen. by that name. Amen. That name, Jesus, is above. That's why I said, if you ask anything in my name, and since he left planet Earth, and the Bible says he's coming back again, but since he left planet Earth, his presence has been here with us. He has been here with us. You know, he said, he said in my name, in the book of Mark, Mark chapter 16, Verse 17 to 18. He said, In my name, ye shall cast out demons. Ye shall lay hands on the sick. Ye shall take the serpent. And when you drink any deadly thing, it will not what? Hurt you. In my name. That name, Jesus, is a powerful name. That name, Jesus, is a glorious name. You don't joke with that name. Even physically, I've heard of people who physically, people are confronting them physically. And they mention the name of Jesus. And God brought deliverance. We have seen people who have been in accident before. Terrible accident. And as then something was about to clash or whatsoever. And they mentioned that name Jesus. All they knew is that they saw themselves somewhere. They saw themselves somewhere. And when they look at the, what do you call it, the vehicle or the car. Everything smashed, but the person is sitting down. How did the person get out there? Because of that name, Jesus. So I challenge you today. According to the word of God, I say, ask in my name, and I will do it. Please continue to ask in the name of Jesus. Any situation you are, ask what? In the name of Jesus. Pray in the name of Jesus. Command situations in the name of Jesus. And they will obey you. Amen. The disciple came one day and they told him, they told Jesus, and they, they came, they came, they said, we saw people casting out devils in your name, we, 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 we stopped them. And they don't need to do that because they, don't, they are not following us. Jesus said, no, don't stop them. That anyone who is not against me, you understand? Anyone who is not against me can easily use that name. But because they are for me, they are not against me, that's why they are using it. And you see, when we are you know, not in the situation of Paul, we know the disciples sons of Scavers. The seven sons of Scabers, when they were there, and then they, they, they wanted to go and cast out a devil in the name of Jesus. The demon told them, look, I know Paul, I know other one, but who are you? I don't know you. The Bible says the demon beat them. So people that are commanded to use this name are the followers of Jesus. Are you a follower of Jesus Christ? Do you follow Jesus Christ? Have you believed in Jesus? If you want the name of Jesus to be very effective in your life, when you mention it, if you want the, the name of Jesus to have impact in your life, then there is the need for you to surrender your life to Jesus. When you surrender your life to Jesus, the Spirit of God comes into you, and when you mention that name, Jesus, it becomes very much effective to the glory of the Lord God Almighty. And I pray to be so unto you in Jesus' name. Amen. Because Jesus arose, because Jesus arose, Verse 15 says, Verse 15, If ye love me, keep my commandment, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Praise God. Because Jesus Christ arose, the comforter is with us. The comforter, verse 20 of John chapter 40 says, But the comforter which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have said unto you. He said this before he died. And when he died and rose again, when he was taken up to heaven, that the angels of God told the disciples, this same Jesus you see taking up on heaven is coming back the same way. When the disciples left that scene and they gathered themselves together in the upper room, the Bible says, the promise, Jesus Christ promised them, Acts chapter 2, did what? Came to pass. And you are telling me that Christ did not rise. 